So there's a couple other things that I, I want to show you for this last part of our introductory day. I'll use the line and arc tools a little bit more with some shapes, um, but we're going to look at some of the tools that are up here in the objects menu. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to open up Sketch 2 again. So I double click the name Sketch 2. And that opens that figure again. And I just wanted to show you, let's say you wanted to make a heart. Um, you can actually take, well, you could take, I think the best way to do a heart is to intersect two circles. Whoa. So I have two circles. Um, I want them intersected, but I'm not sure if I'll do that right now. Yeah, you'll probably want to know how to shoot. Let me, um, let me get this up, right? Da, 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 da. I'm in the wrong place. Let me hit this. Okay, that's how I want it to be. So I haven't mentioned how to move stuff. And for both sketches and objects, you use the transform tool. In the sketch menu, the transform tool, I think, is under here. Yes, it is. So this linear pattern is the default. But when I click this down arrow, you can see there's a transform tool. So now I'm going to select around this. And then I want to move it so that these two slightly overlap. And then I'm going to hit Enter to say, yes, I'm done with that. Oh, no, I don't hit Enter. If you look at the little figure where the mouse is, um, you actually have to click the left mouse button to confirm it. Okay. Now I'm going to take the line tool and I'm going to set it up there and go down here and then go back up here. Okay, so it kind of looks, and I'm going to hit escape. Kind of looks like a bird, but if I start trimming these, and it's not going to be a perfect heart, but you can see if I delete all of this inside stuff and this little thing on the outside, I have a bit of an awkward heart. Um, you could also start with the V part. There. I know that's not that's not symmetrical, but that's okay. And then I could take the three-point arc tool and go like this. And then I could go here to here like that. So that's another way. Again, they're not perfect hearts, but... You can kind of see how you can use these tools together. Um, yeah, so you just got to think about how you can use the different shapes and combine them to make the overall sketch that you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close sketch two. And I want to double check that I'm not forgetting anything. Ah, OK, transform. So we've already transformed within the um, sketch menu. We're now going to transform with some of the figures out here. Now, earlier I hit all of these parts. Um, I'm actually now going to hide sketch two. I don't want to see those bad hearts. And I'm going to turn on, or I'm going to show all of the parts from our first batch of shapes. Um, and you can see I have some overlapping things. So I'm going to want to move a couple of these things. Now, in order to move or transform a whole shape properly, you have to have it selected. And one of the, and it's annoying at first, and then you get used to it, is that you can't select a shape by clicking on it because it only clicks the face you clicked. So I'm going to hit Escape, or I'm going to click out of here so nothing is selected. So the best way to select a whole part is to click it. So if I click part five, you can see I have this oval one, this, you know, elliptical cylinder. And the transform tool for objects is here. If, if it's not showing up, I, I think it is the default tool. But there's transform. And so now when I... Now what you have to do is it opens one of these boxes. You don't want to translate by line. 
you want to translate by XYZ. And so now you can see these things showed up again, these little widget things, and you can move this off to the side. And then again, I'm waiting for my computer to catch up with me. When you click, oh no, for here you have to click this check mark. And then it moves out of the way. So let's get this this cube out of the way too. I just gotta figure out which part it is. So I'm gonna click until I find out which part it is. And then I'm gonna deselect the other two parts. So I have my um, cube selected. I'm gonna go to transform. You have to change this to translate by XYZ. And then you can move these arrows. I think I moved that up. Oh, no, I didn't. I moved it in the proper direction. And then you click the check mark and it's out of the way. Um, and, and that just takes practice. And sometimes it's just trying to remember which tool it is, um, which makes it really nice that they give you the screen tips there. Okay, the last two things I'm going to show you. Are, are special effects you can add to objects. Um, the fillet and the camphor, or, or chamfer. I'm not sure how to pronounce chamfer, but I know this one is pronounced fillet. And what these do is they work on the edges of shapes um, to make them, I don't know, more appealing. So if I take the, camp, the fillet tool, when you click on the edge, see how it doesn't really, well, I guess you can click the whole face and it will do all four edges at once, but I'm just gonna start with this edge. And when you click it, it rounds the edge, but it also provides an arrow, which allows you to increase the edge, that, that roundness, or decrease it. So you can have a really little fillet, or you can have a big fillet. And again, like before, you can put in a, a radius if you have a specific one. I'm going to click OK. Um, and so you can see I only did one, but if you want to, you can click more than one edge and go to fill it. And then again, move that in and out as much as you want. Usually I do all four at the same time, so I, I have uniformity. And then click the check mark. So that's what a fill it looks like. Um, and you could even do it with the CA thing. So if I click fill it, and if I click the face, it does a fill it on the whole thing at once, which is kind of cool. I'm going to click yes, because I like that. Um, and I know it's, it's a little hard to see, like, it's a little annoying seeing all the actual edges that were formed. But when you 3D print that, it'll be nice and smooth. Um, I noticed it didn't, I like to do it on the inside. Okay, so that's the fill. It gives you that nice round edge. The camphor or chamfer um, gives you a flat look. Um, so you can see that gives you a flat plane instead of the sharp corner. So I'm going to leave that chamfer there. I'm going to come over here and add another chamfer. And again, if I zoom in, I'm not seeing the arrow, but there's different types here you're welcome to play with. Um, and yeah, I actually haven't played with these before. You're welcome to experiment. So yeah, those are just some effects you can add to 3D figures. So I want you to use the camphor and the fillet at least once, each one at least once, so that when you take a screenshot, I'll see at least one figure with rounded edges and at least one figure with flat edges. Um, yeah, and you'll get credit for that. So again, use your, use your snipping tool. Go ahead and highlight around it. Um, also, it was important to make sure I was in a 3D perspective. So make sure you're in a 3D perspective before you capture it. And then you're going to go back to your notebook and you will find your Onshape intro work page where your shapes are and your CA is. And then you're going to paste it there. So those are three things you want to turn in today. So I hope that goes well. Um, 
you should definitely be able to finish the first two. Um, so I look forward to that and I hope it goes well. Remember to relax and just rewind the video, listen to what I'm saying, um, and pay attention to the little details. Okay, I will see you next week.